Welcome to Prejim Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 50 of ASP.NET video series. In this session, we'll discuss about validation groups and causes validation property. Before continuing with the session, I strongly recommend to watch parts 47, 48 and 49 of this video series. Now, let me first explain what we are trying to solve here. Now, we have a simple web form here with two sections, login section and a user registration section. If the user has already registered with your website and if he wants to log in, he just supplies his username and password and click the login button and he logs in. Now this username and password are obviously required fields. So there are two required field validators on the web form. In case if the user doesn't provide the username and password and then when he tries to click in this uh, login button, then the appropriate user error messages are displayed in the validation summary control. Along the same lines, if the user has not already registered with your website, then we also provide him the opportunity to register with our website by providing these fields. And again, all these fields, email, username, password, and confirm password, all are these mandatory fields. So there are required field validator controls. And in addition to those four required field validators, we also have um, regular expression validator just to ensure we have the right format for the email and a compare validator to ensure password and confirm password matches. Now, if the user doesn't provide any of these fields and if he tries to click the register button, then it's going to through those required field validation error messages. Okay, but on the other hand, let's say if he enters some junk or something and he wants to empty all the text boxes instead of deleting uh, each text box one by one, he can click the clear button and all of them would be deleted in one go. So that's the idea of this web form. Let's see this web form in action. Okay, so let me run this form now. And if you look at this, this web form basically, by the way, it's already designed. It has got all the validation controls, the respective buttons and everything there. So as soon as the web form is loaded, um, now let's say I enter some junk here. And then look at this, I want to clear all these fields. So I click this clear button. What do we expect? We expect the web form to be posted back to the server. And obviously, in the button click event handler, we will have code to empty these text boxes. And these should be cleared. But then look at what's going to happen when I click this. This is the first problem. You know, my intention here is to not uh, cause any validation in the first place. The web form should be posted back to the server. And then all these fields should be cleared. But what's happening here, since this is also a button, it's causing the validation to be triggered. Unless and until I fix these errors on this page, I will not be able to post the web form back to the server for processing. So how do we disable the validation from happening? All you have to do is you know, when I click this button, I don't want the validation to be triggered. So I want to disable the validation. How do I tell that to the button control? Every button control has a property called causes validation, which is true by default, which means cause a validation event to be triggered. Okay, but if you set this to false, then on this button click event, the validation controls will not be fired. Okay, so let's go ahead and also write the server side code to empty the text boxes. So we have txt username.text and to empty the text boxes all we have to do is set them to string.empty. Similarly, txt password text box dot text is equal to empty string and txt uh, confirm password dot text is equal to empty string and along the same lines we want to set txt email password I mean text to an empty string. Okay, so now let's run this once again. Let's fill the web form with some stuff there. And now let's click the clear button. Look at that, no validation events occurred. And then the web form is posted back to the server. This code got executed and all the text boxes are cleared as expected. Okay, so that's the first problem. When I click the clear button, form validation still happens. When I click the clear button, I just want to clear the text boxes in the registration section. Validation doesn't make any sense here. So how do I prevent validation from happening on that button click? All you have to do is set the causes validation property of that button control 
to false. By default, the causes validation property is true for all the button controls. Okay, now we have another problem here. That is, when I click the register button, look at that. You know, I get validation errors here. Okay, username is required, which is fine. Password is required, which is fine. Again, email is required, which is fine. And look at this. Again, it's saying username is required, password is required. So where is this coming from? That is this username and password. Okay, so it, it's like whether, you, whether I click this button here in the login section or whether I click register button in the registration section, you know, all the validation controls on the page are being fired. And look at the validation summary controls. Each validation summary control is showing the error messages of all the validation controls on the page and it doesn't really make sense. If the user has to log in, all he has to provide is the username and password, click login. And if he doesn't have a username password, he will provide these details and click register button and he should be able to register with your website. But then for some reason here, all these validation controls are interfering with each other. Okay, so how do we solve this problem? This problem can be very e easily solved using validation groups. Okay, so the name itself says we are going to group these validation controls. Okay, so all you have to do is tell, you know, the page that these validation controls that we have in this registration section, the button control and this validation summary control, all these are going to be one group. So when I click this button control, only fire these validation controls and any error messages associated with them display in this validation summary control because all of them belong to the same group and the same logic applies for the login section. So when I click this login button, fire these two validation controls and any errors associated with them display in this validation control. So we want to segregate them into their own groups and how do we do that? With the help of validation groups in ASP.NET. Let's see how to do that. So let's flip the web form to the design mode and uh, instead of changing one validation control at a time, what we can do is hold down your control key and select every control so I'm going to select, you know, that, 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 and that validation control, the register button, and the validation summary control. Press F4 to get to the properties window, and I'm going to change the validation group of this user registration section to something like registration. This can be any string, but it has to be the same for all the controls. So now we are telling, okay, all these controls form one group. And along the same lines, I'm going to select this validation control here and this validation control, the validation summary control and the login button control. Press F4, get to the property and I'm going to give this a meaningful validation group. So I'm calling this login group. Okay, so now these validation controls, this validation summary and this button control is one group all these validation controls, this button and this validation summary control is one group. So now if we run this, they belong to different groups. So let's cancel this, rerun once again. So when the page loads, there are different groups now. When I click this button, only these validation controls will be fired and the error messages related associated to them will be so shown in this validation control. And along the same lines, when I click this button, these validation controls are fired and the error messages associated to those are displayed here. And look at this on the other hand, if I enter, you know, a username and a password, okay, no validation errors. So when I click login, the web form should be happily posted and no login validation errors. And along the same lines, if I provide an email address, a username, a password, and a confirm password and click register. Okay, invalid email. So let's give a meaningful email there, prajeem at prajeemtech.com. That's a valid email address. I click register, no registration, validation errors as expected. Okay. Now, yeah, the validation groups basically helps us to group, you know, validation controls button and validation summary control so when I click that button only the validation controls related to that group are fired and the error messages related to that group are shown in that validation summary control. 
On this slide, you can find resources for ASP.NET, C-Sharp, and SQL Server interview questions. If you want to receive email alerts when I post new videos, please subscribe to my YouTube channel at youtube.com forward slash Thank you for listening. That's it for today. Have a great day.